that didn't work. Here's a cedar I showed you guys at the yard uh, a couple ago there at my tent. Perfect. That a boy. So when you get big logs like this, you don't have a forklift or you don't have a crane truck. This is why, I don't know if you guys can see the real size of these logs. They, they looked a lot smaller when they're at Buddy's yard than to when I get them here. Now they're here. Now I got to deal with them. I got to get them out of the way so they're not, I like everything to be clean here. I have these are the logs that I showed in one of my at the end of one of my beach combing videos. I haven't even measured these. So they're like 12 feet. 12 feet long. The farmer here, he uh, he's over there, I can see him. The farmer here does have a backhoe. He would help me, but I don't want to bug him right now. I'm not gonna carve a spear uh, totem pole out of these logs. I got one over there that's smaller. I might use that one. I won't cut that one up because it is kind of manageable. I'm going to cut this log in half and make a, this summer I'll make a bench with two nice big thick posts. So I got my 500 eye here. It's right here. I'll put my chops on and put some ear protection on and I'll cut this log and that log in half. so wet the outside where the bark is I need to scrape it let me show you guys how wide is this this is like this is western red cedar so let's see how like two foot wide I don't know how I'm gonna roll these logs around this one anyways is this filming in, uh, I gotta make sure it's filming in 4K because I can zoom in better and stuff with that. So, and I don't know if this microphone's working. I don't have my little fuzzy thing on it. This is one of my cheaper microphones. So there you can see the width of it. I'll put my hand on it. So, I got these two bigger ones. I got that one, which I'll probably just leave a full log. And I got this one when I can cut up and carve some gnomes or something with this. Or, I don't know. So I need to want to get into chainsaw carving and want to start doing like bigger carvings. It'd be good to have a forklift or a bobcat around to, well, <laughs> you can see for yourself, I got to use my dolly forklift to do this stuff. This log's longer. This this front log's probably like 13 feet long. So anyways, I'm going to cut. I'm going to put my chops on, fire up my 500 eye, and cut this back log from the back. I'll be standing in the back. And I want to cut it straight, too. Where's my mark? And I want to cut it straight because, think, that they're going to be bench ends, and you want to have the bottom nice and straight. So my chainsaw teeth, I just sharpened it. They're, they're all over the place. So like some are pitched this way, some are pitched that way. I could pull out my, my good grinder, chainsaw grinder, and sharpen them that way. But I just kind of, now it's starting to piss rain. <laughs> yeah, the life, it's the life. Yeah, it's piss and starting to piss. Sure is.
I don't know how I'm gonna move these. So my microphone stopped working. That cheap microphone. That's the whole new thing about um, the great thing about my new microphone is, um, well, it's I can keep it running, keep it turned on for eight hours, and just when I'm not using it, I just <laughs> keep it turned on. So it's probably good that my microphone's not working because I'm probably just whining and bitching here the <laughs> the whole time. Look at me, I'm like I look like an old man, whining and bitching the whole time. <clears throat> um, I did show these logs when I was. Um, when they were at the yard at the end of a beachcombing video. And I'm not carving a 12 foot tall totem pole thing. No. Those logs that I'm rolling right now are man are man manageable logs. I think they're probably like six feet each. The <laughs> see there I am bitching again. The um the logs closer to you right there, they're two feet wide. I think I already said it. And uh, well I was gonna I roll one into the shop and I, I was gonna carve uh I was gonna carve uh a friggin' bench out of it because I start rolling to the shop, but then, um, hey, you can see it's raining there. I don't, I'm not gonna do that. I got these logs here, I don't have to carve them tomorrow. They're here. I gotta go back tomorrow and bring my PV. PV's like a log roller thing, it hooks in and you can roll it. And, um, I'll put them on, on dundage and put a tarp over them. So I just know that I got them there, right? So, um, Here's a big shout out to uh, Larry. I did give you a shout out in the original video. Larry Dibbs on Vancouver Island, a good personal friend of mine and a great carver. He just got uh, recognized on the Dremel Maker Maker Studio. I don't know if he won a prize or not, but um, Larry's been fighting with COVID for the last couple couple um, for the last couple days here. So if everybody wants to give a good thought for Larry, Larry's on medical leave from work anyways, long term disability. He's got a hurt back. And he's he's pretty messed up actually, so I message him every day just to tell him to take it easy and hope that he's doing good because he's got a big heart in our um, group on Facebook, Carving Fusion World of Wood Carvers. He uh, always makes common likes everybody's posts and um, that says uh, positive things to people. So there's the old man sitting. There's a screenshot. So Larry. You know, that's how we lost George here in the group. I'm doing this voiceover looking at your sign, so just take it easy. I'm going to tell a quick story here, Carvey Fusion story time. So, lots of you know that I've been getting renovations in my place, and, well, the curtains, they were they were friggin' painting around the curtains, so they said they need to take the curtains off. So I got my scissors and I cut the friggin' curtains off. I said, fine, you happy? I'm, I'm on edge. You know, I, I made a beachcombing video the other day saying about my glasses breaking and being on edge and being in a shitty, I'm still on edge. It doesn't mean I'm depressed or anything like that. I'm just on edge. So today, after these logs, I was like, okay, screw it. I'm not going to deal with these logs today. I am going to, I am going to go to Ikea. Ikea is like a sweetest sweet. I got told I could buy curtains at Ikea from a, from a girlfriend. So I went to about the Ikea 30 minutes there. And then the curtains that they had, I didn't like the curtains that they had. They're for like, for like my sliding glass door and a, another thing so I didn't like the curtains that they had so I said okay well since I'm and I drove there in the piss and rain pissed off it's just it will pass it will pass and I'm not looking for any sympathy here it's just not saying who I am um and uh so they got cheap hot dogs there so I went and bought um I gotta hurry up and say this before this voiceover ends cheap hot dogs there for a dollar each and I like hot dogs with lots of mustard on them so I went up to the lady there no lineup perfect boom Everything's getting better. I said, can I get two hot dogs, please? And, and it's a little Asian girl, older kind of lady. And she's like, no, sir, you got to order at the sign. I says, pardon me? You got to order at the sign. I says, what do you mean the sign? I look back and I didn't see it. She points. She goes, over there, over there. You got to you gotta order first at the sign and pay there. I says, I can't pay cash for, I can't pay $2 cash for hot dogs right now. She's like, no, you you need to order there. Play with, play with your card. So I was like, fine, I spend a moat five hours trying to figure out how to order two hot dogs on the sign and a pop. I think you got like two hot dogs and a pop for like $2.50. Put it on your debit card or whatever. So I went up there. I had this, the slip came out. I took her the slip. I said, here, are you happy? Here's your receipt. And she goes, thank you. She gave me my hot dogs and then gave me a cup for my drink. They don't even have like Coke there. It's all like Swedish kind of drinks. I don't know. 
and so, but I just gave him my hot dogs and I, and then the re- tried to give me the receipt and I says, oh, I don't need that. She goes, no, you take. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, I, I don't want, I don't want back here. You take it. And she pointed, she goes, garbage can there. Just like I said on that, just as where, you know, it's a good thing that I've grown up with a terrible t- temper and know when it's going to flare. I felt like yelling out at the top of my lungs. I felt like yelling, listen, and I felt like grabbing the receipt and just whipping it at her. It's It would be like not even a gram wet. But I felt like saying, listen here, you little soya sauce. Just throwing the receipt at her. Listen here, you little soya sauce. And then whipping the receipt. So everybody in the whole place heard, but. I didn't. Then when I went and put the mustard on my hot dogs, they got those box machines, you know, you pump it out. All I could do is envision myself as grabbing that whole box. It's like, uh, let's see, like, uh, like, like, pretend it's like two cases of, three cases of pop stacked on each other. Two cases of Coca-Cola stacked up on each other. I just visioned, visioned grabbing that, um, grabbing that, uh, mustard machine and just whipping it back not hitting her i wouldn't want to hurt her but whipping it back there and mustard splatting everywhere and yelling out at the top of my lungs do you want fucking mustard back there well you got mustard back there are you happy and, I, and filming it having it on my phone turn phone turned on and filming it <sighs> the old geordie might have done that but I'm not about I'm not about that stuff anymore. Like I said, it's a good thing I've known my I've I've grown up with such a like a spaz temper, and um, I know when it's a, it's about to kick off. So it's just best not to um, because all that would do is get me thrown right in jail. But anyways, I'm sure you guys all have stories like that too because the world is changing. The world's changing, and we just got to um, we just got to deal with it, you know, and. Here I am. I think this is where I give Larry Dibbs a shout out, Larry. You know, I'm turning. I'm going to be 50 this year in August, so you know, I'm turning into that old guy. You know, when I used to work, when I started work, I, I started working for three dollars and twenty five cents an hour. Now all these young punks are making like thirty dollars an hour from the quitting school. It's just the way it goes. I remember my dad told me he started working for like 25 cents an hour, 15 cents an hour when he started working. Now I'm, now I'm one of those people, 50 years old. I can't believe it. I don't, I didn't think here, I was going to do this for a screenshot. Yeah, well, Here's a car infusion screenshot moment. Three, two, one, cheese. Anyways, those are big. Those logs are, are bigger than I want to kind of deal with. I don't want to get into big carvings, but I am thinking about carving an octopus. I'm thinking about carving an octopus, like going down with his tentacles wrapped around something. Here's the grain in that wood. It's nice cedar. It's second growth. It's not first growth. It's got kind of wide rings, but it's a nice solid log. The water wood's solid. Lots of times that stuff's rotted out. So each of those bigger logs are six feet tall. I know if Steve Kenzora is watching this, he, he'd probably say, carve bears, Jordy, carve bears. I can't even carve a bear head that looks like a bear head, Steve. My last bear head it looks like a friggin' squirrel. So, in this log here, I decided not to cut it in half. It's a little thin pecker pole. I'll do a spirit pole out of that. So, yeah, those logs, I'm not complaining. Beggars can't be choosers. The arborist saved them for me. I'm lucky. Cedar's... Western red cedar is such nice wood to carve. But I'm not going out and buy. I can't afford to buy a bobcat. I can't friggin' afford to buy a thing thing. I got my back breaking forklift. That's all I got. Okay, voiceover is done. Thank you very much. Carve on, carry on. Hey, just carve Rob. How you doing? I'm still in the shitty mood. Maybe you could maybe you could tell me what, what I was thinking. Let me show you here. And you can say, Jordy, what were you thinking? So, yeah, I cut the logs in half, but look at the size of them. How the fuck, I got one, two, I cut that one in half over here. These are like, uh, let's see here, they're, that's like six feet tall now. That's like five feet tall. This one too. That big fucker in my shop. And this one. Maybe you can tell me, Jordy, 
What the fuck were you thinking? Look at the size of this log rub. It's two feet wide. I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do.